What's up, I'm Drew, and I'll be playing the old Gisarai Chronergy Wizard. He could be anywhere from 22 to 700. The world may never know. This story begins with the Silver Lining Trading Company. The Fen and the Ross families were running the company together, splitting the profits evenly. Each family had one kid. The Fens had Ark, and the Rosses had Aurelia. In order to combat the fact that profits were split, Ark and Aurelia had very little choice in what and how they grew up. They grew up only really knowing one another. You can say they were grim to marry. The Fanes and the Rosses no longer wanted to have the Silver Linings Trading Company run by two families. So they basically arranged the life that Aurelia and Ark would live. Making sure that when the time came, they would marry, they would take over, and they would make one family so much better. Now we get to roughly 60 years before the events of this campaign. Silver Linings Trading had been confined to the continent of Imanar. No matter what they tried, nothing would work. No practices or outreach ever allowed them to expand off of the continent of Imanar. That was until the shipping hub of Fues, the home of this campaign, was no longer an island. According to most, it seemed as if it had imploded and this gave the opportunity Silver Linings needed. Ark and Aurelia, now the sole owners of Silver Linings, celebrated. And they may have celebrated a little too much. This is where Marth's story begins. In light of earning the rights to Silver Linings, Ark and Aurelia ended up creating Marth. Since they were too busy trying to run a business on a new continent, and honestly they never wanted Marth, they sent him away. They sent him to the Hunchy School for Scholars, along with a bunch of money to take care of him and the school. I mean, what could ever go wrong with a kid in college? At first it was great, the students love having a baby around. It allowed specifically the females to quench their baby fever, and it also showed the best contraceptive to the Hunchy School of Scholars. The students saw the good and the bad about having a baby. This one girl named Ashley loved Marth, she was there the day Marth was dropped off and basically claimed him as her own until she graduated. This trend continued for about five years. Ashley was the best parent Marth ever had. After those five years, the students started pushing back, demanding to know how and why this child was allowed to be in the school. Marth started to have to prove himself. By age six, he had mastered two cantrips, prestidigitation and firebolt. With those two, as well as a general ability to just retain information like a sponge, he was easily able to sail through life until his teens. On his 16th birthday, Marth distinctly remembers a group of boys, mad that he was acing a class they weren't. The boys dragged him behind one of the dorm buildings and beat him for what felt like hours. They beat him so badly that if it weren't for a very kind student who was learning healing and restoration magic, he likely would be dead. That was the day where his mind shifted. Marth and Tell, 16, had primarily cared about learning and the pursuit of knowledge. Ever since that day, he desired to prove that he isn't simply a burden. Upon true acceptance to Hunchy School of Scholars at age 17, Marth studied harder than everyone else. For some reason, his intellect never developed into practical skill. In his first year, he had a professor, Woolendon, who was teaching an introductory magic class. Marth was doing great, but he was unlike the other students. Marth wasn't able to do as much. It wasn't natural to him. He was able to memorize everything he could ever need, but it didn't turn into magical skill. This trend continued to happen through his second year of school. Marth earned the nickname, the stupid genius. He knew all the information, but could do nothing practical. After his second year, Marth gave up trying to be a powerful mage. He embraced the name the Stupid Genius, and instead, he decided he would simply become the smartest mage. He decided that if he could simply focus on his intellect, it wouldn't matter if he couldn't cast the spells. He would beat someone through brain power alone. Marth realized his obsession with the flow of time could be his edge. He could take his ability to retain information and his natural bend towards high intelligence and focus on the flow of time. To Marth, 
time became the answer. If he could understand its flow, or ever control its flow, he would be able to completely change his life. His identity as the smartest man without magic would go away. He could go back to when his parents left him and simply hand himself to Ashley and let her raise him. He could become the greatest wizard that never was. He could surpass the idea of stupid genius. That never happened. Mars' study of time took him throughout grad school, eventually earning himself a doctorate. But he was never able to control it. Many a day were spent pondering what if questions. What if I received a letter telling me to do something differently? How would that change the present? Complex questions rattled through Mars' head day and night. In Mars' final year of his grad program, right before he got his doctorate, he caught himself wondering, did I just waste my life? Could I have been spending that time more focused on a social life? Why did books come so easy when people were so difficult? After a midlife crisis at 25, Marth moved on rather quickly, no longer bothered by things like people. His principal, Kibble, approached Marth after receiving his doctorate and asked if he'd be willing to replace Woolendon. Woolendon no longer wanted to teach basic magic after being called into the big leagues of more leadership, less day-by-day -day teaching and more running the school as a whole. This gave Marth the ability to start teaching he didn't really want to teach. Marth became a professor because the school was all that he knew. He could count on one hand how many times he'd left the grounds since being dropped at school. So instead of changing anything, he stayed. It was easy, it was home, and it allowed him to keep studying time. For four years, he taught, studied, ate, and slept. Well, occasionally. After those four years, he had a new obsession, deities. He couldn't grasp enough about time to impact it, and he couldn't use enough magic to change anything, and he needed to become more powerful by some other means. Thus, he started to pray to Agma, the god of knowledge, who conveniently had a temple in Telflom, which is only a couple days travel, allowing Marth to make the journey every year. This also led to a shift in teaching character. Marth no longer congratulated the gifted students. The students who achieved magical breakthrough naturally no longer passed Mars class. Internally, he decided, if they don't have to study as hard as he did, they will take his class twice as punishment, regardless of how capable they are. That continued until March 20, 2082, when Mars' whole life changed.